Hello, this is the XTAR PB2SL uh, power bank and battery charger. Uh, it's got quick charge three and also power delivery three, and it can do 18650s and 21700s. So let's get this open. And in the package, we get the uh, charger and power bank. There's a type A to type C cable instructions. There's also this little adapter, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so the cover is just magnetically held on. And inside we have two X-Tar uh, lithium ion NMC, nickel manganese cobalt, uh, a 5000 milliamp hour 21700 and a 3600 milliamp hour 18650. Now I should point out that you can't actually have these two in the unit simultaneously because this little adapter plugs in at the top and adapts for 18650. If you don't have it, it's 21700. But I can have two 21700s in here at the same time. So I've got this 21700 uh, lithium ion, uh, which I've had for some time. So I will put that in alongside the XTAR one. Now the XTAR one to me, because that looks like a PCB on the bottom there, this looks like a protected cell. This one isn't, it doesn't really matter. This will charge both protected and non-protected cells. Now, just a quick word about this rotating buckle, as they call it. Uh, you spin that round like so, and that holds in 18650s. If you turn it this way, then vertically it sits between the 21700s. It just provides a little bit of extra holding power to hold the cells in place. So if you want to use 18650s, the first thing you do is put the little uh, extension piece in up the top here, that clips in there. And now I can put an 18650 on this side and I'm gonna use this one, uh, another 18650 on that side. And for the 18650s, we rotate the buckle round to that position and it just gives a bit of extra holding power. Okay, let's switch the unit on, press the button on the side of the display area. It's saying 39%, now that's an average of the two uh, cell percentages. And we've got five volts on output one. Now output one is the USB type A. So let's get a little LED, stick it in there and there's five volts coming out of that. Okay, so now let's try charging my phone from this power bank. Right, here's my phone, needs a charge, so I'm gonna plug it into the USB type C, and it has a bit of a rethink. Uh, it's pulled the voltage down a little bit, but you'd expect that at 1.4 amps. And yes, now it's charging the phone. Now I know that this phone is capable of requesting nine volts. Um, I have a feeling that with a USB, a USB output uh, in the type A socket, that it will hold the output of this device down to five volts. I don't think there's electronics to have different voltages on the two outputs, but we can check that. Uh, let's start by pulling out the USB uh, light and see whether the phone changes its request from five volts to nine volts. Um, it doesn't seem to, but what if I unplug the phone and then plug it back in? Let's see whether it requests nine volts from the USB type C. Uh, not at the moment, no. Now this unit has um, PD3 for power delivery, but also has QC3. So what we can try is putting in the supplied, well, it's identical to the supplied cable in the USB type A, plugging that into my phone and see what we get then. And yes, in this situation, I'm now getting nine volts uh, requested by the phone. The phone will have told this power bank, can you give me nine volts? It's supplying nine volts at 1.4 amps. So that's a little bit more power. Okay, let's be a bit more scientific about this. I'm gonna use a PD trigger. So let's plug this one into the power bank. Um, now, if I press the button 
I can make it pull nine volts and indeed the power bank is supplying nine volts and if I press it again I can request 12 volts and the power bank is supplying uh, those three voltages it won't do any higher voltages because 12 volts is the maximum so that goes back to five volts okay let's try this now on the quick charge three output uh, this is actually a quick charge two trigger but uh, it should request the higher voltages okay so that's requesting five volts uh, i'll press the button on there yep that's made the usb type a output go up to nine volts and if i press the button again it's gone up to 12 volts so both the usb type c and the usb type a outputs can output 5 volts 9 volts or 12 volts now interestingly if the usb type c device is requesting 12 volts and i plug in a usb type a quick charge device it actually drops back to 5 volts and you can see the red light on there means that it's outputting 5 volts on output uh, 2 it would be the USB type C and if I request the higher voltage on this device where's the button it's up the top there I don't get it I don't think this device is able to supply a higher voltage on both the type C and the type A in PD3 and quick charge 3 simultaneously <laughs> that's just a bit too complicated and just to confirm that if I put an LED in the USB type A and it puts 5 volts out on that socket now on my PD trigger if I request the higher voltages for the USB type C it refuses to do it because I suppose it doesn't want to put more than 5 volts out on the type A okay now let's look at this thing from the point of view of it being a cell charger a battery charger um, it is only for lithium ion nickel manganese cobalt or I should probably say 4.2 volt chemistries uh, you can't charge lithium ion phosphate in this unit because it charges up to 4.2 volts okay let's use the RAV power power bank as a source so I'll plug in a USB type C cable now you can only use the type C on this device as an input you can't use the type A as an input of course and we'll see what happens and uh, yes this device has requested 12 volts from my RAV power and is pulling 1.5 amps so that's 18 watts and now when you're in battery charge mode you can see uh, the average percentage of these two cells but if we press the button we can actually get information on the individual cells so battery one the XTAR battery is uh, at 3.8 3.9 volts and it's charging at 2 amps uh, battery 2 is also at a similar voltage and it's also charging at 2 amps now interestingly the manual says charge lithium ion battery um, when the demands of fast charging are met the input voltage and current will be 9 volts 2 amps charging current will be 2 amps times 2 so 2 amps for each cell or 2 amps times 1 if there's only one cell in there uh, but it doesn't talk about 12 volts here however here we've got input uh, is 5 volts 2 amps 9 volts 2 amps or 12 volts 1.5 amps and of course it's got these three voltages for the USB output so there is uh, some question mark over whether or not it should pull 12 volts for charging now we've seen of course that it does if I go back to this screen uh, the two cells are at an average of 34 percent and it is pulling 12 volts 1.5 amps from the USB type C so about 18 watts 12 volts 1.5 amps going in and we've got 4 volts 2 amps that's 8 watts going into cell 1 and 8 watts going into cell 2 now what happens if I remove cell 2 clearly nothing's going to go into cell 2 uh, oh it's having a rethink it's still pulling 12 volts it's ramping the current up on the input and it's actually gone over 2 amps for cell 1 so although the manual talks about uh, charging the cells at either 1 amp or 2 amps you can actually get a little bit more if you've got 12 volts on the input you can get about 2.5 amps going into a single cell
But what happens if we have only one cell in there and then I plug in the USB uh, like so, it actually only goes to five volts, nearly two amps, and is charging the cell at two amps. So it seems to start with five volts if you've only got one cell in there. If I put the second cell in, what happens? It goes to nine volts and distributes that amount of power between the two cells. So it's doing one and a half amps for each of the two cells. But if we plug in the USB type C with two cells in there, it seems to go to 12 volts. That means that we've got two amps per cell. And then if we take one of the cells out, we can get more than two amps. We need to go to battery one for that. It's having to have some thoughts about this. Oh, briefly, we've got over three amps, but that does seem to back off to a more sensible current. So from what I can tell, uh, there are various sort of undocumented modes on here. There's nothing that's wrong. There's nothing that would mistreat any cells. But yeah, you can get more current if that's what you want, a quicker charge. And you can get the input voltage to do different things depending on the sequence that you plug in the charge power and that you put the cells into the unit. Interesting. Now there's one other mode. If we just go back to power bank for a moment, if you press and hold the button to switch it on, it will blink the display. So it will turn the display on and off. And it's said that this is a mode for using a USB light, oh, that's the cold white one, or charging something very low current like earbuds. And I think what they're trying to say is that this won't turn off if it sees a very low current being pulled from the USB output socket. In fact, if I leave that on the bench for a moment with nothing plugged into it, we can see whether it turns itself off. And uh, yeah, that's been sitting on my bench for a couple of minutes. It hasn't turned itself off. So I think this mode just disables the auto shut off if there's a very low current being pulled from either of the USB outputs. So all in all, I think this is a pretty handy uh, battery charger and power bank. Uh, it takes two cells. And not only 18650s, you can also do 21700s. Yes, now that of course has shut itself off uh, in normal mode because there's no current being pulled on the output. Uh, one thing I've noticed um, with unprotected cells, uh, this is exactly 70 long and I've had to put a few magnets uh, on the bottom of it because although it does fit, uh, let's put in the XTAR cell and also this cell. Although it does fit, it doesn't press this spring-loaded contact very far and so it, uh, when I was tipping it up, its own weight was causing it to fall down a little bit and disconnect from that contact. So unprotected cells, you might want to put a small stack of batteries on there. Uh, magnets, sorry, these are neodymium magnets. Uh, just so that you get a nice good contact uh, between the little spring-loaded plunger and the negative end of the battery. And then, yeah, we get a good connection and everything works fine. Yes, it seems to be uh, quite a well-behaved uh, power bank. And if you put two 5,000 milliamp hour 21700s in here, then it's a 10,000 milliamp hour power bank. And it also seems to be a pretty reasonable cell charger and you can charge at one amp, two amps, or push it a little bit further by tricking it into having two cells initially and then taking one of them out. And I found that you can charge at about 2.5 amps. Uh, it seems to support all the um, power delivery modes, 5 volt, 9 volt and 12 volt, and also the quick charge modes, again, 5 volt, 9 volt and 12 volt. So big thanks to XTAR for supplying the power bank stroke charger and uh, these two cells. And I will put links in the description below to this device. But that's it for this video. Cheerio.